This show is the epitome of beating a dead horse. What is up you guys? Welcome to another video essay. Today I'm going to be talking about the Netflix series Elite and how I feel like the show has come from being one of the most iconic new age teenage Netflix series to just basically being a shit show. If you want to see and hear what this show is all about and what my opinions on this show are about, then keep on watching. Elite is a Spanish teen drama television series created for Netflix by Carlos Montero and Daro Madrona. The series is set in Las Encenas, a fictional elite high school, and revolves around the relationships between three working class teenage students enrolled at the school through a scholarship program and their wealthy classmates. Elite explores concepts and themes associated with teen dramas, but also features more progressive issues and other sides to its cliches. These include many diverse sexual themes. Structurally, the series employs a flash-forward plot that involves a mystery element with each season taking place in two timelines. For most of season one, we follow the lives of three working-class friends, Samuel, Nadia, and Kristen who were offered scholarships to Las Encenas, the most exclusive private school in Spain. The scholarships are sponsored by the construction company at fault for the school's collapse. At Las Encenas, the three are initially ostracized by wealthy students. As the school year progresses, their lives intertwine in a clash of lifestyles, resentment, envy, and sexual attraction through a series of flash-forward scenes of police interrogations. The audience is shown stories of the characters' relationships that led to the murder of Marina. For season two, we learned that after the revelation of the murder, the second season deals with the lead-up to the disappearance of Samuel. Meanwhile, three new students, Valerio, Rebecca, and Cayetana, join the school, where each of them has their own dark secrets. They befriend the students in their class, while Samuel continues with his plans to clear the name of his brother, Nano, who was accused of Marina's murder. Meanwhile, Polo attempts suicide to clear his conscience, but eventually learns to live happily with the help of Cayetana. And there's mental health deteriorates due to the burden of keeping Polo's secrets. Carla is made to believe that Samuel is dead, so she confesses about Polo's crime. Polo is arrested but is released two weeks later and returns to school. Now seriously, this should have been the end of this series, but they just keep going on and on and on. In this season, the students enter their last semester at La Cincenas. In a flash-forward plot, the students are interviewed about Polo's death during their graduation party. Polo and Cayetana are left as outcasts by their peers, with the exception of Valerio. Samuel and Guzman continue their plot to bring justice for Polo's crimes. In this season, we are also introduced to two more characters, Yere and Malik, who play love interest to two characters, Yere for Carla and Malik for Nadia and Omar. And these, honestly, are the only two characters they had thought to put in this season since the show started. Lucrecia and Nadia compete for a scholarship to Columbia University, leading the two to form a mutual friendship. And there is diagnosed with leukemia and begins chemotherapy, causing friction between him and his loved ones. On the night of their graduation, in a drunken stupor, Lucrecia accidentally stabs Polo who stumbles and falls to his death. Samuel, Guzman, Ander, Omar, Nadia, Carla, Valerio, Rebecca, and Caetana agree to cover up the murder. Unable to find a suspect, Polo's death is eventually ruled as a suicide, and his parents tell the police he confessed to Marina's murder. Two months later, Samuel, Guzman, Ander, and Rebecca return to repeat their final year with Omar, who has enrolled as a full-time student. If the producers and the directors had left this as the ending to the series, it would have been somewhat of a delight for the viewers. But unfortunately, they decided to go on and on and like I said, beating a dead horse. The show was renewed for a fourth season, fifth season, sixth season and now a seventh season. And the overall plot of these seasons do not have any stop substance to keep the show going. It just relays on overly, you know, exciting plotline, nude scenes, and overall cheesy 
stories to keep the show running like i said if they had left it at season three as the ending it would have been somewhat of a delight for the viewers for the last three seasons, I feel like they've been changing faces and introducing more characters. And this is a tokenistic approach and doesn't do much to distract from how played out most of these matters feel by now. However, with such a young social media savvy cast and an audience who are clearly ready and willing to lap all of this up, there is no reason to imagine the show will be going anywhere anytime soon. Looking back across the whole episodes of season 5, there really aren't any memorable moments. That's a problem because those who were put off by season 4 are unlikely to be rolled back in here. Elite attempts to raise trans issues and explore the trans experience to let save mixed effects in season 6. But it tends to be very surface level. My final thought on the show is Elite should just please end it because it's becoming really really hard to see through 8 episodes of practically nonsense if you did enjoy this video please do not forget to give it a huge thumbs up subscribe share comment also to check out my other videos i do want to link them down in my description box and also in the icard above for your convenience and as always ciao i will see you on the next one <laughs>